Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. So today I'm going to discuss some aspects about the new algorithm which has come out and that's ChatGPT. And uh, you must have heard about ChatGPT. It is essentially a machine learning tool and it can answer several questions for you. So you can easily download this on your phone or on your laptop. I did this on my phone and I essentially spend a Saturday evening talking to chat gpt and here are some of my conclusions now many people have said that chat gpt represents a huge step in machine learning and it also poses a threat for large aspects of the research and education system so let's look at some of these issues so if you ask chat gpt any specific question which is a typical composition or essay type of question then you get a pretty good response. So for example, if you were to ask it how to reduce blood pressure or what is the source of happiness or how can a person do a PhD or should you do a postdoc, you will get very good replies for these questions from ChatGPT. So essentially what ChatGPT is doing is it's probably browsing through information it has in its database or through the web and collating all this information, collecting all this information and then giving you back in a very good written manner the analysis which you probably need to look at. Now the interesting thing is that the level of words and the analysis which you get is probably what you would get from most journalists for example so that's certainly a huge accomplishment as far as machine learning is concerned now i asked chat gpt first many questions of this nature and i got good replies from that and of course after some time i realized this is the kind of reply you would also get from wikipedia or if you ask these questions to google so what's the big deal about it so then I started asking ChatGPT some questions about itself and I think it has been very cleverly programmed. So I asked it if it's sentient and it said no it's not, it's just a machine learning tool. Some of the information I gleaned by asking it question is that it is essentially a machine learning based on supervised learning as well as reinforced learning. So what this means is that people have essentially trained this through a set of questions and answers and therefore whatever knowledge or bias was present in the people who trained it has also been built into this uh, machine learning system. Now some more digging also led me to realize that it is using the ReLU function. So I asked it uh, the question about what activation function is being used in its programming and that's the ReLU function. So it also suggested very nicely that sometimes TanH and sigmoid functions can also be used so that's interesting but this is an interesting thing which has happened in machine learning over the last two decades when I was first working on this topic we were using sigmoid functions and now most of the machine learning is being done with ReLU. Now about the code and what language it's written in it basically told me it's written in Python, C++ and some of these languages it uses a trust region type of optimization to essentially solve these problems as far as learning is concerned. Now these were some of the interesting information I got from ChatGPT. Now where I was really impressed by ChatGPT and this may be the place where I find it very useful is uh, in proving things and also in writing snippets of programs. So for example if I ask it a question prove that pi is an irrational number I get a pretty good proof from ChatGPT. I also asked it uh, to prove that uh, root 2 is not rational and it gave a pretty good proof of that. And um, then I asked it to write simple programs such as write a program to calculate the factorial in Python. I got a pretty good program for that. I asked it to write a program for the median filter. So median filter is essentially a median of a set of numbers or a list and I got a good function for that. Not only it gave me a function but it also gave me the functions which I can use if I use the NumPy library. So it gave me I think a couple of options for solving this problem. So that was pretty good. 
then I asked it some question about uh, moving average filters and so on and it was able to give me pretty good response to that so various uh, simple things you can ask it and it can write snippets of code for you for example how to sort a list of numbers how to find the second largest um, term in a list of numbers and so on so i think chat gpt is suddenly going to help people in programming so if you have a large programming assignment you can take the help of chat gpt to help you in creating different functions now i also checked out with uh, some other languages such as c with c also the programs came out very well i tried with fortran but with fortran it was probably not so good it was giving some rather weird looking program though it was correct it was giving statements like do and end do which uh, can be used in fortran 77 but you could use do continue statements also and so on so I think it probably is best in Python. That's what I figured out from uh, talking to ChatGPT. Now, one of the things where people in the education and research community are worried about ChatGPT is as far as the education system, particularly in high school, is concerned and primary school, ChatGPT is going to pose a competition to most of the teachers because if the teachers are going to give simplistic homework assignments and problems, then people are simply going to solve these using ChatGPT and give it back. So I think one of the things which is going to happen is much less homeworks are going to be given and much more classworks are going to be given because one way of course is to figure out if people have actually used chat GPT to do the assignment. So that's going to be a whole field of uh, study. I'm sure softwares are going to come out which are going to tell whether plagiarism has been done with respect to what has been created by chat GPT and uh, so that's something which is possible but i think the challenge to the education community is to now come up with questions come up with projects uh, essays which are different which are divergent which are more creative so that uh, we don't have to give people simplistic things to program also a lot of this kind of thing has been going on but now with chat gpt you clearly know that if you are prescribing some routine problem to the students they are probably going to give you a solution which is generated through machine learning by looking at the various databases around the world. Now where its positive element is there is that it could help a lot in programming and uh, it could help people also who do not have access to this kind of information. For example, when I ask these questions to me it seems pretty cooked up answers but all these answers actually seem very logical so if for example you were to ask a question about uh, how to lose weight or how to uh, decrease your blood pressure or um, wh what are the capitals of the different countries of the world it is likely to give you all these answers in short notice so this is going to be a great educational tool for people who do not have access to good teachers or whose teachers do not know much so unfortunately this is the case with a large number of people around the world so these people would certainly benefit from chat gpt as i do all this right now chat gpt is free i hope it remains so but you never know uh, there is some teaming up between the company which created chat gpt and microsoft so i hope that this will slowly come into various actual software domains and may be able to help you a lot now there could be more possible usage in terms of people who have certain problems like people who are deaf or blind or mute uh, and we could probably use chat gpt to help these people to improve the quality of their life so there are a whole number of problems which are possibly likely to be addressed by a machine learning tool like that and i was very impressed by chat gpt's responses to me but it seems it has been coded in a lot of the aspects for example it keeps telling that i'm not sentient i do not have feelings i do not like anything and so on so i asked chat gpt questions like do you have friends and it says no i can't have friends because i'm a machine learning i asked it questions like uh, um, you are sentient or not and it says no it's not so i think these are very much programmed and some of the responses i got about questions like what do you think about the different political systems which is the best political systems it doesn't actually take a stand on this so it doesn't tell me that democracy is the best political system instead it gives all the political systems out like democracy capitalism socialism dictatorship and so on and lists the details about the system so i think it's playing a very politically correct role i'm quite impressed that 
it has been trained to be so politically correct and uh, there of course you can figure out it's not really a human being here because it's essentially compiling information and collating information and giving it to you it really does not have an opinion as of yet maybe it will develop that in future now as far as research is concerned you can ask a lot of questions about your research and maybe you can get some answers from chat gpt so if you are sometimes struggling with some very simple problem which is standing in the way of your research maybe you have to write a simple program maybe you have to do a small uh, piece of uh, literature survey which is very um, routine then you can take the help of chat gpt but be careful do not give away your brain to these kind of tools because then you will slowly become a victim of these machine learning tools so that was my take on the interaction with chat gpt i hope you enjoy interacting with this machine learning tool and you will certainly realize that how powerful machine learning has become through the simple shift from sigmoid functions to the relu functions and using some of these deep learning and machine learning type of methods remember that optimization is at the base of all machine learning and therefore if you are somebody who is interested in machine learning you can look at the optimization course i have put up in youtube that's certainly a good place to start i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you soon in a new video see you then